From this point forward we're going to start looking at tides, drawing up plans and hopefully we'll get to go off and go on an adventure again. One other little thing we're going to do because we haven't started the engine for a while is we're going to break all the rules and we're going to start the engine with the seacock closed. rediscovering windows. <laughs> We've been not used to having our, our laptops run on Linux. Um, I've just updated the chart plotter software for the coming season and it says do not turn off during update. That just, <laughs> just sounds very windows. <laughs> so this is getting its software update. I have the vice grips out because they were all that was required to fix the cockpit shower temperature control. Bit of brute force and ignorance did wonders. And we have also fitted the little flashy light thing that goes with the um, horseshoe boy. So that's now fixed as well. And then I've got to sort out somebody else's wetsuit. I will not mention any names. And um, going on from there, I've got um, things to put away. I've got diesel to put in the tanks. It's just a million little jobs getting ready for the, um, the upcoming season, I guess. Okay, Bev, so what's next on your list of jobs to do? Cleaning salty sausage. We had that green goo on or whatever it was and we've had struggled to get it off to be honest. Uh, we've tried all sorts of things, it doesn't seem to work. So we've bought this inflatable boat cleaner. It cost <laughs> the rather outrageous price of £13 for this tiny bottle. But I have to say the results, I think it maybe justifies the price because the stuff's coming off in seconds and it's gleaming. But to be honest, I think the downside is it's taking my, thing, taking my skin off with it. It did say wear gloves with this product. I did. It dissolved the gloves. So hopefully it won't dissolve the glue on sausage and things like that. But yeah, this is this is doing the job. I'm quite impressed actually. And there's also some sort of like dingy polish stuff that you put on afterwards and we'll try that out and see how it goes. But for now, so far so good. It's the uh, weekend here on Salty Lass and uh, I don't know about your weekends but uh, ours tends to run on a little bit of family so we saw Beverly's mum yesterday and cooked her a lovely um, dinner and now it's DIY and <laughs> we finally came through to a job we've been uh, avoiding servicing our engine. <laughs> so why are you turning the engine by hand Bev? Well, it hasn't been turned on for a while, so if I do this, it's a manual oil pump, a shaft-driven oil pump, it's not electric. So what I'm hoping to do is just pump some oil around the engine by hand, so that when we start the engine, it's got some oil in it. So, you know, just, just move all the components by hand, mm -hmm. so that, um, you know, the engine is not starting completely bone dry. Mm. Now we just use a, um, either a spanner or what we're using at the moment for that. Just a screwdriver. Yeah, but we find that just using it across uh, works well. Just, but put, just put it on the main pulley and catch it on the, the uh, big teeth thing. Mm. So half a dozen turns, then let it sit for a few minutes. Okay, so we're going to start the engine and one of the things we're going to do is we've been advised by mechanics that if the engine has not run for a while, then there is a possibility it might not start. So what we've been advised is start the engine with the seacock closed, which is against everything you've ever been told, but the reasoning goes like this. When you are turning the engine, it's a mechanical seawater pump that pumps water through the system, puts it into the exhaust. The exhaust depends on exhaust gases from the engine to blow that water out and clear the exhaust. If the engine hasn't started, the pump will pump water in, but there's no exhaust, exhaust gas to blow the water out. So the danger is that the system will fill up with seawater, which will then work its way backwards into the engine and hydrolock the engine and destroy it. So what we were told by a mechanic some time ago was, if the engine hasn't run for a while, start it with the seacock closed. It'll take several minutes for the engine to heat up enough for it to be a problem. So opening the seacock 
20 or 30 seconds after the engine starts is not an issue. The engine won't even be warm at that point. So we're going to start it with the seacock close as soon as it starts and we have exhaust gases moving through the exhaust system to clear the seawater. We can open the seacock and let the water come through and we can then keep an eye out the back and make sure that the water is coming through the system together with the exhaust gases and that everything is working as it should do. Yeah. Having said all that, because I'm here on hand, I am going to have my hand. You will have your hand in the seacock and as soon as the engine is established and running after a few seconds, you can open the seacock and I will then go to the back of the boat and check that there is water coming out of the exhaust as there should be. Yeah. But we've got to warm the engine because uh, to change the oil... To change need... the oil, we have to, the engine, we have to have warm oil in the engine to get the, to get the oil out. Mm. Um, but when we started the engine, she was quite raspy, uh, whereas now she sounds a lot better. What I've done is I've taken the um, I've taken the engine out of neutral because um, I had the gear I had the gearbox in neutral, and I've put her into forward drive at about 1,100 revs. So the only thing stopping her leaving at the minute is all her lines and ropes. And what I'm doing is I'm turning the propeller and that'll just clean the propeller off it puts the engine under some load which means it can turn with a load on it which is always better for a diesel engine they prefer to have a load rather than just be wobbling around in neutral in neutral so um yeah she's not going to get terribly warm at 1100 revs but she's going to get warmer she's turning the prop uh, so we know that works i'll check the lines make sure we don't go back into the pontoon and then we'll just check the reverse gear is also all right yeah, but we'll let the engine warm first Um, oil service and um, we need some help. Uh, Beverly and I have both used the, it's supposed to be like a trick to use the plastic bag and every time that we have done it, it has never worked. <laughs> you try and get the plastic bag right. I don't know what idiot thought it was a good idea to put an oil can sideways on an engine but they need taken out and whipping. <laughs> oh. In the end fell out with the bag not even anywhere near it so I've, well, it's two times the bag has been a waste of time it's spread oil everywhere so I think in future I'll ignore the bag. <laughs> I've never had luck with the bag idea. I know everybody wants oh use the bag it's brilliant. Oh, days. And I'm scheduled to do the next oil service. Beverly did this one, so I'm scheduled to do the next one. So I wouldn't mind knowing exactly what the heck it is, the uh, bag trick. Um, but um, the only sort of hints and tips, obviously, uh, is making sure that the oil is uh, warm. Uh, we have this little um, oil extractor tool and uh, although it does make a very very good bilge pump never <laughs> never be sort of like all think you use it as a bilge pump because um there's a little one-way valve inside here and that's very easy to clog up um i'm afraid to say when i did it um i ruined the whole thing <laughs> so just don't use it as a bilge pump um and other than that, it's just a case of getting on with the job. Well, the good thing about doing a engine service is I get to treat myself with all this beautiful food. to say we're really really pleased um, with the state of our primary filter um, you know because you'd expect to see some um, maybe some uh, signs of diesel bug or something like that but clearly the fuel set that we use on a regular basis um, is working because there's absolutely nothing to worry about in here I was expecting some water um, 
yeah, you get condensation, but um, you'll get condensation more because um, you're letting the fuel f uh, lie. But because we're using our um, fuel on a regular basis, because we use it for heating, it never lies. It's always being replaced and things like that. But, um, but in the past, we've had a little bit of water in the bottom. We have had water in the bottom, and this time we've got absolutely nothing. And also, when we stopped using the fuel set, we had a little bit of black jelly on top of the filter. Just a little bit of black jelly, and we might find some black jelly in in the secondary. Uh, fuel I don't think filter, you will. I, I, I don't think we will because if it doesn't get through the if it if, it, if it's not through the primary. Yeah, it's not in the primary at all. So, so it won't be in the very, secondary. It won't be in the secondary. Uh, and last time we did it, um, our you know our fuel filter was really clean as well so just looking after your fuel is definitely uh, working for us of course we could have three feet of black sludge in the bottom of the tank <sighs> we could do but i don't think so because like i say we use our we tend to run our fuel right down to the bottom don't we yeah because we're using it for heating so it gets recycled mm. okay so after we had changed all the diesel filters um all the diesel had come out of the diesel lines and we have to reprime it and we always have a problem yeah our problem is the fact that with our particular engine um we have to have a marker that's on the um flywheel um set against um the word top which is actually marked on the engine and every single time we cannot find this little mark and it's just ridiculous. Um, so what we've done is um, we've used some Tipex um, and um, we found the mark and we've Tipexed it and then I've used um, a little bit of um, a Sharpie just to highlight the mark because every single time we lose it, don't we, Beth? And if we get that against the little mark, the diesel fills very quickly, doesn't it? It fills very quickly and um, we can hear because you can actually hear the air coming through the system. Um, we can actually hear it, whereas um, when it's not against the mark, it just doesn't make any noise whatsoever. Yeah, the wee lift pump doesn't seem to work. It doesn't do anything and it's like, and you like there and you're... And it does say in the Volvo manual, put this to that mark, otherwise things mightn't work. Yeah, well, in our experience, you have to put it to the mark, otherwise it just doesn't work. Well, we've just run the engine, and so all is good. We don't seem to have any airlocks. We ran it for about 10 or 15 minutes, uh, had a cup of coffee, that sort of thing. Um, we've been having a look at the secondary filter, and we had a slight panic when we saw this grungy stuff along the top. And quite frankly, we have no idea what it is, but... Diesel bug is like a jelly. This stuff is hard and gritty. So what we think it is, it's just basically engine dirt that's just because of the engine compartment. It's just got in bits of dust. It's on the outside of the rubber seal. All the diesel flows inside the rubber seal. And if you look down into the filter, you'll see it's absolutely sparkling clean in there. So um, whatever's in there, it's not much. I mean, I could cut the can open and have a look on the inside, but I don't think I'd find very much, to be honest. So. We had clean looking diesel, we had nothing on the primary filter, we have nothing on the secondary filter, so I think we're entitled to feel fairly happy about all that. As far as we can see, we've done the major jobs with the engine, we've got to change the coolant, but that really has a matter of draining the old one out and topping a new one up. We're not expecting much in the way of problems from that one. Uh, fingers crossed. So this means that we are ready to go and do sea trials out in Belfast Lock, and then after the sea trials, it will hopefully be time to go if things open up as we hope they will. So it's time to start looking at the tides and paying attention to that. And Gaynor has been studying that sort of thing because round here tides matter and you don't want to be working against the tide, you want to be working with it. So from this point forward, we're going to start looking at tides, drawing up plans, and hopefully we'll get to go off and go on an adventure again in a couple of weeks time. But, first of all, it'll be a few sea trials and things like that, and we just need to plan when we can do them. And that means going out at a decent tide and just getting stuff done.